Yahoo, Yahoo, Waha. Hello, Wolf Den Podcast, everybody. How you doing? Good to see you. It's Bob and also, well, and also, well, it's <laughs> me. <laughs> Damn it. I promise he's here. If you, if you spoke, it would, you have to speak for it to <laughs> go to you. You can't just gesture. It doesn't know. <laughs> I didn't, I wanted to see how long I can go with like people questioning whether or not I actually was you here. You can go the whole episode if you don't say anything. <laughs> Uh, hey, I'm back. Hi, how's everybody? How's it doing? You know, last week we had Zeon on the yes. podcast, and uh, people were very upset. I didn't do the backlog with Zeon. I was wondering if you were going to do that or not. Like, why would I, I do I that? I wouldn't have been offended if you did. But the premise of this show is like, yeah. it's our backlog. <laughs> yeah. What? There's a very high possibility yeah. that we pick a random obscure game that he has never heard of. Before. I mean, to be clear, there's a very high chance we pick a random game that we've never heard of before. I know, but it's like the story of like yeah. why we got it, you yeah. know? Anyway. So, fair enough. Guys, hello. Welcome. Uh so much has happened yeah. in the past 2 weeks. I lied. <laughs> nothing happened uh um, nothing happened but we do have news we do have some uh, hot button issues to talk about hot button uh i mean not to get into it but right out of the gate uh something that i know uh you've been very upset about very in upset. recent uh in recent weeks and months uh very sad. paying f- uh, to play games early that's that's a hot button issue oh yeah I we know. also got uh f- we got a whole bunch of news about um studios shutting down about tv shows getting canceled and getting emmy nominations it's a oh. weird time to be alive uh we got the ftc coming after microsoft again because they just can't help themselves uh we got nintendo releasing a new peripheral for some reason and much much more not often nintendo releases a new peripheral these yeah. days uh before we get into any of that, let's talk uh completely off topic. Okay. Something that's not written down here. There were two things that I wanted to talk about. One of them, uh, I'm doing the Asus ROG Ally review this week. Oh, uh, see, I thought that was the my old friend the MSI Claw for it, a minute. You know, it looks, it looks an exactly awful lot like, like it. it. Yeah. Well, that's because okay. the MSI Claw looks exactly like the, the Asus original Ally. One. Yeah, but, but black. black. And yeah. now this is the Asus Ally button black. Okay. It's the same. Right. Uh you got Ooh. more RAM, it's faster RAM. I can unlock it. For I you. got it oh. unlocked. So there's Chrome. Are yeah, don't looking? expect uh, a nice fancy UI. I was just playing around in Chrome. Okay, two All seconds right. ago. All right. I mean, I like the feel of it. I like everything. The seems to Ergo. run great on it. I I'm don't. Very happy with it. You know, I agree with you. I don't like the RGB around the analog sticks. I hate RGB, but it's in everything. Now. I know, and like if I'm playing it at night, you know, while my wife's trying to sleep, and I got the and the lights are off, and I got these bright honestly i usually immediately turn them off but i left them on just yeah for the video so all right not bad they're off on my other ally yeah yeah uh cool. but yeah no it, you get a couple more frames out of games that's pretty okay. much it um cool can't wait to see how i wreck that one <laughs> so the problem here though is that i instead of playing this mm-hmm. because, ah we're back okay there we go sorry everybody hey we're here. Just random uh, GPU error, and then OBS crashed. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened. I think OBS didn't want us to talk about the ROG Ally X. No, like they're in leagues with ASUS. There was over. there's been some weird. The embargo was really weird. They, yeah, they, they uh, first of all, people got preview units like a month early. Right. Except for me, of course. Uh, I I got to try it two mm. months ago. Yeah. Uh, but I wasn't allowed to post a review or anything. They had an embargo for Sunday and an embargo for Monday, and they didn't say what was why or what was what. Yeah. So anyway, I wasn't ready to fucking talk about it until now. Anyway. Uh, but you were saying when we went down. I was down, saying instead of playing this, you're playing in my leisure. Yeah. I've been I've been playing a lot of PC handhelds. Let yeah. me tell you, I've been playing my Switch lately. Mm-hmm. But this past week. Playing a lot of Switch. Right. I'm playing a lot of Nintendo World Championships. And you're loving it. I'm addicted to Nintendo right. World Championships. It's great because it's a speed run game. It's got mm-hmm. micro little speed run things. Yeah, yeah. And I love that shit. That's cool. And I'm all about it. Nice. Very nice. I've been hearing good things about it. I've been seeing people really excited for it. Uh, Have you seen my uh, 
my grudge with Jeff Grubb. I have. I was laughing the entire time. I really got to do something about that yeah. because uh, he did great. Yeah. So so there's uh, weekly challenges. Mm -hmm. They give you like five really quick levels that you just got to try to get the best time in every week. Yes. Uh, this week, I got to fucking destroy him. He's a 40 year old <laughs> man. Yeah, and you're you're a nimble thirty six year old. So. <laughs> hey, I'm almost thirty five. <laughs> um, but still, like you know, I thought like this guy, you know, it's yeah. Mario. Yeah, I got it. That's your come that's on. your thing. No, <laughs> uh, a lot of the games, like you get you get ranks in the games, mm -hmm. like like A rank, S rank, whatever. Uh, the difference between A plus plus and S rank sometimes is like two frames. Oh god, it's crazy. I would hate that. I love it you yeah. have to want to play the same two seconds of a game mm -hmm. a thousand times yeah when i started playing the game you get just the first level uh the first level is just get the first mushroom in the first mario brothers okay. that's the first thing that you have to do is just okay. get the first mushroom i could do that blind well i played that uh you get five coins when you mm -hmm. beat the level i got three thousand coins I played it for like two or three hours, okay. just the one level, okay. nothing else in the game. Okay. Just the, just getting the first right. mushroom in Mario over and over again mm. for three hours. And that's how I've been enjoying my Nintendo <laughs> World Championship. <sighs> All right. Well, very good. Thanks, man. Thanks so much. I enjoy it. It's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. I completely acknowledge that, that game is not for everybody, but I've I've... I've been liking, but it for so a cool. certain sect of people who like that for, type of adrenaline rush, for me specifically, yeah. great game, nice. Uh, all right, we got notifications from Lord Noradge. Thanks for the six months. We got somebody called Will Wolf. Damn it, with fifty-one months. Hey, Wolf Bros, a friend of mine sent me a flyer for a Renaissance fair, and they have what they're calling a quote time traveler weekend. I was curious what you think that could possibly entail. Does that mean we're allowed to wear modern clothes instead of having to dress up? Or is just going to turn the thing into a time splitters LARP? I sure hope it's the latter. That is a real thing that happened to me. <laughs> so a friend of mine did send me a flyer for a Renaissance fair, and apparently I've never been to one, although I want to go because you get cool like leather wrist cuffs and I'm into that shit. Um and apparently one weekend they're having he's, a time traveler fair. He's into BDSM. And, like, we all just assumed it was going to be Time Splitters themed. So, like, we go dressed up as Time Splitters characters and we just, like, shoot at each other with paintball guns. There's so, no way that's actually what it is. So, if you go to a Renaissance fair normally, like, if I showed up to a Renaissance fair like this, yeah. would they kick me out? I don't know. I do not know what the proper protocol is for a Renaissance fair. I can't imagine they would kick you fair. out. I know that people who go to Renaissance fairs like are really into it, mm -hmm. and I don't want to like step on that or anything. So, what is a time traveler's week? That's what I'm trying to figure Guys, out. We need some of you nerds to tell yeah. us. Yeah, all you dorks out there, not us cool guys. They just theme each week like fairies, pirates, and stuff. Yeah, there's a pirate weekend. But so, so wait, is it is a time traveler's week at a Renaissance fair just nothing? Well, this this is what he sent. Pirate Weekend. Pirate Weekend, Marketplace Weekend, Time Traveler Weekend. I, do, I, I get it's a theme, but isn't that just not a Renaissance <laughs> yeah, fair? Yeah, if it's, <laughs> it's just... if it's Time Traveler Weekend, then you don't go to the Renaissance era. You could go, like, to the future, to, like, you know, the industrial age, you know? Or just, na just, just now. Yeah. The... In the darkest timeline. <laughs> Whatever. Um, anyway, Uber Yoshi, thanks for the six months. Big Willy. Hey, uh, Pixel Adventure, thanks for the eight months. What's up, Wolf Bros? Hello. Hello. Filthy Casual XL, thanks for the four months. Love the content you put out. Thanks for being you. Oh my god, thank you, Filthy Casual XL. Uh, 100 Bits, Snake Eater. By the way, I did not pay for early access of NCAA 25. I was willing to be patient and wait 30, uh, three days. I already waited 11 years at this point. What's mo three more days? Well, you're doing it correctly. And then and we War, thank you. War Machine, thank you for the 11 months. Hello. And then over on the other one, oh, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast, Farmer Gooch with five bucks. Oh my God, Farmer Gooch. He gifted five bucks last week. Yeah. Uh, when uh, we weren't even streaming on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. 
All right, uh, let's just get right into uh, you guys. If you've ever paid to play a game early, like Starfield, what else? Uh, Call of Duty. Starfield, Call of Duty, uh, Diablo 4, Mortal Kombat 1. Yeah, if you've ever paid because you just can't wait to play those games on release, you have to play them when they release three days before they release, mm -hmm. uh, you're part of the problem. Yes. Um, so... This is based on an article from Kotaku uh, titled Greedy Publishers Have Won and Normalized Paying uh, to Play Early. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's more of like an opinion piece and it gives a lot of like the the writer's own personal perspective on it. But I do want to highlight uh, some things. While it didn't technically start last year, in 2023, we saw an increase in the number of games offering early access for a price. Mortal Kombat 1, The Crew Motorfest, Starfield, Diablo 4, and a few others all offered players an, an option. Pay the standard price to play the game at launch or pay extra to play a few days early, assuming the servers are working properly. Uh, now, it seems like an obvious ploy uh, by publishers to milk gamers for even more money than they already do via in-app purchases, cosmetics, battle passes, and XP. Uh, it was hoped that people would realize that all of these publishers were uh, were doing was holding back a game's release for a few days just to make some extra money. It was also hoped that gamers would see this as a scam that it was um, and that these early access perks were worthless. Looking ahead at the rest of 20, uh, 2024, it's clear that publishers, big and small, have uh, seen other games make lots of money via early access launches and are following their lead. Here is a list of games scheduled to release in 2024 that offer early access via a pricier special edition, how much that version costs, and how early you can play it. So oh just, my god, this is a big list. Exactly, no. This is all this year? Yeah. Oh so I'm just going to read the list. Uh, college football, 25. Three days early, $90. Madden, NFL 25. Three days early, $90. Monster Jam Showdown, three days early, $70. Star Wars Outlaws, three days early, $110. Uh, Visions of Mana, uh, one day early, $80. Age of Mythology Retold, seven days, seven days, seven early, days early for $50. <laughs> uh, Space Marine 2, four days early, $100. Sword Art Online, Fractured Daydream, three days early, $85. Undisputed, Three days early, $80. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Three days early, $100. Sonic X Shadow Generation. Sega's in on three it? Three days early, $60. Life is Strange Double Exposure. 14 days <laughs> early. That. For 80 bucks. That is ridiculous. Assassin's Creed Shadows. Three days early, $110. Concord. Three days early, $60. Silent Hill 2 Remake. Two days early, $80. Earth Defense Force. Six one day early, 90 bucks. Um, Enotria, the last song, three days early, 60 bucks. Earth Defense Force World Brothers 2, one day early, $75. Those are two different games. I guess so. Coming out this year. And this is the, and this is the kicker. Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. The Silver Edition, you can play two days early for $80. Or you can play the Gold Edition seven days early for $90. You know when we kept saying that games are uh, technically cheaper than they've ever been? Or or I guess saying that games used to be more expensive than they are right now? Yeah. Uh, this is... Uh, this just throws, <laughs> yeah, throws this, dirt this, in that this argument, this yeah. is the fix Yeah, that. This it's, is publishers uh, trying to... They're trying everything. And like, yeah. you know, we already like bemoan microtransactions and like, you know, pay to win DLC and like your content that gets locked behind DLC and stuff. And this is just one more thing that publishers are now adding to their repertoire to like, you know, eke out a little extra money it, it, from you. It's ridiculous because th throughout all of our years in playing games, mm -hmm. whenever we talk to somebody about a new game, they always say, ah, I don't want to pay 60 bucks for that. I don't want to pay 70 bucks for that. I'll wait a couple of weeks and buy yeah. it on sale because games almost immediately go on sale. Mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of it swinging in the other direction. Yeah. Launching early for more money. Yeah. Or you buy it the day it's supposed to release mm -hmm. for that 60 or $70 that people already didn't want yeah. to pay. So it is really just raising the price of games 
uh in a in a in, in a weird like tacked on tax yeah you know yeah and it's another thing too is like you know obviously these higher price tiers like these are like the the special editions of these games like the gold editions or the deluxe editions or whatnot yeah. and those usually come with extra content like extra cosmetics extra dlc and whatnot and some of that stuff is locked to that version of the game so not only are you paying for to play the game early you're paying to get to play the game with more stuff yeah i mean it sounds similar to uh the xbox 360 era we always talk about uh you you have a name for it when they used to uh make you buy it new they were trying to get oh, you to that, that was um, no the actual name ea gave it was project ten dollars yeah so like you buy the game new you get the whole game if you buy it used you had to pay 10 extra dollars to download whatever was missing from the game usually the multiplayer mode yeah or they'd be like a code that you need or something yeah that was uh their way to squeeze some extra money out of the used market or yeah. or just make some extra money at all for, yeah. for new game purchases it was also uh, like you know it, it kind of ties back into this because this is clearly you know trying to feed off of people's fomo yeah like oh i don't want to you know miss out on the game like i better pay the extra money to get it early you know uh this article even goes on to mention uh in multiplayer games this can lead to people arriving well after others have hit the max level and mastered maps and weapons and for single player games it means folks with uh, less money might have story spoiled days before they can play it it's just a real mess of garbage and none of it is necessary <laughs> at all and beyond just how nakedly greedy this all is it uh, also complicates video games even more than before. We already had to check elaborate pre-order charts to see which version of the game to buy. Uh, now some people know. Uh, now some people you know will be playing on Tuesday, while others are starting on Friday. The FOMO affects me really hard. That's why I don't yeah. like it. Uh, that's why I'm so passionately yeah. against this because mm -hmm. um, I want to be part of the conversation. It yeah. sucks to not have to. It sucks that you can't be part of the conversation for the yeah. first week in some cases also they're right if it's multiplayer if it's a multiplayer game or something you are going to start at a disadvantage because you're not starting with yeah. a lot of the other people who are playing the game but going back to the way it was during the xbox 360 era we talked about the project ten dollars at the same time they were doing a lot of other things like yeah. pa all, most new games at the time were packaging in just a dlc item Mm -hmm. that like if you buy it new there's a little card in there and you get a dlc item you type in the code yeah. and you get that dlc item or sometimes it would be the multiplayer or, or sometimes. uh pre-ordering was a big deal they want you they wanted you to pre-order the game and to incentivize you depending on what store you went to you got different things yeah. here and there uh, that was that was something that was complicated too yeah because uh, different stores had different dlcs or, or pre-order bonuses and also the game would come with a dlc yeah. in it so you would have the pre-ordered dlc bonus and then also the new game bonus i that's think in it the was thing. transformers uh yes. transformers War for had a different character in each retailer yeah and if your favorite character was like jazz and like say jazz was exclusive to best buy but there was no best buy around like your town you ain't getting jazz. You're getting stuck with like Ratchet or some stupid. Uh, Didn't character. we do something wacky with that? I don't remember. I, I, I vaguely remember yeah. trying to pre-order it at three different stores. I think so. It, the point is that they're trying every. These publishers throughout yeah. the years have been trying everything to try to squeeze more money out of people because uh, they know it's it would be very unpopular to just raise the price of games. Yeah. Uh, we but, have had multiple versions of games for a long time, like the gold edition and the yeah. silver edition or whatever. Uh, but this seems to be uh, one of those times where it has the potential to uh, ruin things going forward. Yeah. My hope is that this goes the way of Project $10 and eventually isn't <sighs> the popular thing to do anymore. Well, it seems like it's catching on, though. That's the thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, I, there's no article for this, I don't think, but... Uh, specifically for ea sports college football yeah uh 25 which is the new version i didn't realize that this is ncaa and they haven't yeah. had a ncaa football there's, there's a whole big to do with um the athletes rights and yeah. stuff i didn't realize they haven't had one in like 14 years yeah. or something so this is the first one in a long time anyway people are so excited for this game mm -hmm. nerds yes so excited not cool people like us for, for their fanatical sports game uh 
College Football 25 sold 2.2 million hundred dollar copies for early access. Yeah. 2.2 million copies that included the early access. So not yeah. the $70 version, the hundred dollar version. Yeah. So you're the problem. Exactly. And, you know, I, I see people saying in the chat, like, you know, this will die down eventually. This you said like me, this will be a trend it, that goes away. That's the scary part. Like and reading how successful it was for NCAA. I bumped, I bumped this article up because it ties into this story uh, as well. Uh, I'll just read the headline. 82% of American players made in-game purchases last year. I'm, I'm one of those. Yeah. I'm part of the problem. That's there. The thing. Like we all I spent so much money in Valorant. Uh, According to Comscore's 2024 State of Gaming report published by uh, GI.biz, uh, which uh, was made in partnership with in-gaming advertising uh, platform Anzu. According to the report, 62% of adults over the age of 18 played a video game with millennials, hey, comprising 49% and followed by those dastardly Gen Zs at 13%. Uh, of other people surveyed, 77% play uh, on more than one platform and over a third regularly use a combination of console, PC, or mobile. It's claimed that video game enthusiasts in the United States spend 45 billion hours on oh, gaming shit. sites and apps last year, with esports becoming increasingly popular. 86% of Gen Zs and 80% of millennials surveyed say they watch esports, while 53% of Gen Z and 81% of millennials say they engage with esports content. Um, but the big takeaway for me, at least, was that 82% of Americans made in-game purchases last year. Yeah, I'm one of the problems. That's, I know. That's, that's the so thing. We keep saying, like, vote with your wallet. Don't buy, you know, games that have early access. Don't buy, you know, pay-to-win items. Or but you got to gotta see but, the like, skins on some of these they, guns. Like, we keep doing it. I tried to explain this to our mom one time. What? Uh, pay, like, how, like, games like Fortnite... And like free to play games, like make their money. Mm -hmm. Like you buy special skins and like characters and stuff. And she could not wrap her head around that. So like, they're buying fake things for their game. And like, yeah, mom. But you gotta understand, like you could play as Bender from Futurama <laughs> in Fortnite. <laughs> I'm sure there's an easy way to distill it in a way that she would understand. Like in Italian. In Italian. <laughs> <laughs> No, like you buy a wallpaper. Remember, we used to buy wallpapers for phones. Oh yeah, you know ringtones. Yeah. Ringtones. It's like buying a ringtone. Yeah. It's like the same thing. So I during the uh, Amazon Prime Day, whatever. Yes. Uh, I spent eighty dollars on a one hundred dollar gift card for Valorant points. It's like okay. V bucks, yeah, but for yeah. Valorant. Uh, and immediately spent all one hundred dollars <laughs> on like a handful of skins that look like i don't know you get a cute cat on your gun yeah. that like looks at you when you're shooting it yeah <laughs> also i spent maybe 40 dollars on the gundam skins in call of duty yeah. and i never play call of duty anymore <laughs> <laughs> but those like i like the cosmetic skins i know and but those like, are free to play games yeah so they gotta make their money somehow and but i like, think that that's a reasonable way to do it because you don't need the skin no it's just cool is yeah. it a hundred dollars cool <laughs> That's what for, for you to yeah. And me in the moment, I felt like it was a hundred dollars. But like, cool. that's what we're getting at. Like, we see these publishers do like all these dumb things that like are obviously bad and obviously anti-consumer and obviously counterintuitive. And we always say, "This is stupid. This is dumb. Do not buy into this. This is just another greedy tactic to pull money out of you." Uh, but like, we keep doing it. Like, two point two million people paying a hundred dollars to play a fucking football game. That's really? great. That yeah. sucks. Like, like that, that tells you all you need to know. Look, there's well, yeah. You see the little cat on top of the gun. Yeah, I see. The it cat. looks at you and it gets angry when you shoot. <laughs> when you reload, it does a little cool animation. All right, fine. It makes play. all these cool uh, sounds when you uh, kill somebody. Like a, like a, like an animation plays around them. It's cool. Look at that. All right, fine. I'll play Valorant. <laughs> I have a beta I don't code. Even like cats. I have a console beta code. <laughs> also, all of your skins transfer to the console version. So. <laughs> Nice. But yeah, 
Paying to play early is a thing that irks me a lot, and it's something that I will pretty much always refuse to do. I can't imagine a, yeah. a scenario where I will be comfortable doing that. No, like me neither. Like I wait to play games anyway. Like I'm I'm one of those people who advocates for waiting to play games, you know, when they go on sale, you know, when they're significantly cheaper, when they bundle in all the DLC they tried to get you to pre-order like before launch. I, I'm also pretty against the uh different versions of games like yeah. when there's like the silver and gold version and stuff yeah uh, i i we used to get collector's editions all the time. yeah i loved collector's editions when you get physical cool stuff yeah. i don't so much anymore because i just don't have room for any of this shit and yeah. a lot of it is pretty shitty like yeah it's i haven't seen a collector's edition where i was like oh that's cool in like a really long yeah. time uh, even when we were buying them there was a lot of dumb ones but yeah uh, some of them were crazy, like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 with the night vision goggles. Oh, those were that the best. was crazy. That was the best one. Yeah. There was uh, Arkham or Infamous or one of them. Oh, The Last of Us had like a crazy statue. Yeah. Some of the statues. Some that, of the statues were like hit and miss. Yeah, but some of them were like amazing. Yeah. Um, but these days, they're all pretty shitty yeah. looking. Uh, and, and I'd rather just buy the game and then buy like a toy. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't need to get the collection. Edition. But when there's different versions and like one of them comes with like a bunch of digital shit, I don't need it. Yeah. It's not. I, I just want to play the game. Yeah. I don't want to play any of the, the other garbage. Uh, but I will be mad if you purposely leave out game content to include in the higher tiered editions. Like yeah. uh, we always talk about uh, Assassin's Creed 2. 2 did that. Um, I don't like that. And I don't like having to pay to play the game early. I refuse to do that. I, also, too, like... You know, say a game is supposed to come out on Friday, but if you pay $100, you can play the game on Tuesday. That leads, that tells us that the game is done. That the game can come yeah, out that's whenever the, you that's, want. That's and the you're big just problem. arbitrarily saying like, okay, it'll come out on Friday, but for special people who give us more money, it will come out on Tuesday. Yeah, back in the olden days, games used to go gold, and that's how you knew the game was done. Yeah. Because they'd have to submit it to print. Yeah. And the the gold, I don't know, it's 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 like an old record thing, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Like like they oh, would have yeah, to Yeah, the uh, vinyl records would be uh the master would be a gold master and mm -hmm. they would print the uh, press all the vinyls like with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so when a game goes gold, it's it means it's done. It's yeah. ready to go. But these days that doesn't mean anything because you anything. can update it, you know, yeah. ad nauseum with like patches and updated content. But I always make this argument when we talk about this. When you're working at a game company, yeah, there's a date on the board. Yeah. Games got to be done by this date. Yeah. Do you think they have the release date or the early access date on that board? Yeah. Because two, how, how many millions of people bought NCAA? Yeah. They got to get the game ready for the early access. Well, it's got to be ready to go for that date, not the three days later date. And I think that's going to cause a lot of problems because now they're going to start doing that where the game has to be ready by the early access date. It's been like that. Yeah. It, it's, and it's, it's not. That's why I keep saying the game releases on the early access date. The That's the actual release date. Mm -hmm. They are delaying it for everybody else. The day one access is really day three access. Yeah. Because they got to get the game ready for the early access date. They're just delaying it for yeah. you guys and making other people pay a, a, yeah. a, a premium. It's bullshit. I don't like it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Let's stop calling it early access. Yeah. Start calling it, I don't know, day one. And then the release date is delayed access. <laughs> Let's just call that That's delayed what, access. No, we, should, we need to like have a signifier of what this is really is. Because like early access, it's like a... It's, it's like a greedy early access. It's yeah, early access is already early. a thing. Yeah. It's it's like, you know, early access used to be like if you were in press or you were like an influencer or you entered a contest and won, well, well, they now, would give you the game early as like a special prize or a special benefit of your job. Now it's like, give me money and you get the privilege of playing my dumb football game early. Well, early access is supposed to be now... Uh, the game's not finished. It's alpha, and, yeah. you're, and you're just trying it. You know mm -hmm. that's supposed to be early access. Um, paid access is, is yeah. what it is. You're yeah. paying to access uh, the game. Delayed access is what it is when the game finally releases, yeah. uh, or what they say the release date is. Anyway, yeah, it sucks. I, I don't. I don't like this, and I hope that it 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 stops. I hope yeah. that they're 
I hope that col this college football game has some major issues <laughs> because the only way this is going to get we just read off a list of so many games yeah. that are doing this there has to be major failures in a lot of them on that early access period oh i'm sorry the paid access period. yeah uh because otherwise this is just going to keep happening and people are going to keep buying it and it's just going to keep working what's another case where uh people voted with their wallet in a in a wrong way uh loot boxes loot boxes although that kind of reversed but that's because there was legislation around it yeah but like you still see loot boxes everywhere in like a lot of games i haven't heard about loot like weird like egregious loot boxes yeah. like there used to be with like battlefield and stuff that yeah seems like to have that was the fixed itself yeah but they're still prevalent they just got better at like not being shitty about it mm -hmm. not not high not forcing you to like you know either grind for a thousand hours or just pay twenty dollars for you know stuff yeah. you know um also like the whole gambling aspect you know paying money until you get a better thing you know that's like kind of they kind of like stopped doing i that. really think that the government stepped in and was like no this is gambling yeah and then companies had to fix themselves mm -hmm. anyway um I think Battlefront 2 was only reversed because Disney got involved. It was yes. reversed and then reversed back. Yeah. They flip-flopped on it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Listen, I can talk all day about... Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, not early access, paid access. Yeah. Uh, Atif Hamid with $20 on YouTube. Uh, hey, guys, on a semi-related note to these uh, pricing tricks like early access... And with games costing more to make but not going up in price, maybe we do need to price games higher? Question mark. I don't know because gaming is already a very expensive hobby. We already did. It, yeah. it was sixty dollars not too long ago. Now, and it's, now 70 it's seventy dollars. Yeah. So that already happened. Yeah. So, I mean, like, because you're paying like five hundred dollars for the machine to play the games on. You're playing. You're paying seventy dollars per game. You know, and you're buying multiple games. You got to buy, you know, these days you got to buy storage expansion. You probably want a second controller. That's, uh, a, that's another thing is that like a game like Call of Duty have yeah. being like 300 gigabytes. Yeah. That's a cost too. Yeah. That's something you're going to have to pay for eventually. Yeah. But to his point, I would care less if the game was $80 and released the same day for everybody mm -hmm. than if the game is $70 and it's delayed access. Yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on here. Okay. Uh, where do we leave off on the you, on the Twitch show? War Machine, thanks for the 11 months. Uh, hello, Caleb Fox, thanks for the 24 months. Welcome back, Will. We missed you. There was nobody making Optimus Prime jokes on Prime Day without you. Yeah, uh, I thought about it. It was Prime Day in spirit. Uh, Orion Pax is always with us. It's uh, to all our one. It was a disappointing Prime Day. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, no, I... Like, I usually say, like, Prime Day is a great day to buy, like, memory cards and hard drives and stuff, but, like, not this year. <laughs> I was going through it because on Twitter, people were, like, posting stuff, yeah. and I was like, oh, I got a cool Amazon affiliate. Like, I'm going to recommend some stuff. Yeah. And I went through it, and I was like, there's fucking nothing yeah. on here. I think I bought some Spider-Man toys for my kids because it was a three-pack of, like, Peter, Gwen, and Miles for, like, $11. So I'll get that for them. I bought a GI Joe for myself because it was on sale, and that was it. I bought an eighty dollar, uh, a seventy dollar <laughs> Valorant car, yeah. a hundred dollar Valorant car for eighty dollars. Look how cute! Yeah, look how cute there. Little, little cats that little cats. that swim around. It's cute. All right. Uh, oh, and also, uh, Blackbird. Thanks for the twenty eight months. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Uh, Nintendo releases new Joy-Con charger. Yeah. Uh, what is this? Nintendo has announced its own standalone charger for the Switch's Joy-Con controller arriving on October 17th. It's an accessory that many Switch gamers would have welcomed seven years ago when the handheld <laughs> launched, and while third parties have long offered alternatives, Nintendo's arrives with some extra flexibility. Unlike most uh, wireless controllers that uh, can be charged with USB-C, um, this Nintendo uh, Joy-Cons, as well as the company's retro wireless NES and Famicom gamepads, can only charge when attached to the Switch. Uh, a separate charger makes it easier to keep more than two Joy-Con controllers powered up, so it's an odd move for the company to release an accessory like this as, an, as the original Switch's life cycle winds down and its successor is expected to be revealed late, uh, early next year. Uh, Nintendo's Joy-Cons uh, 
sorry, Nintendo's Joy-Con charging stand two-way accessory can accommodate two controllers at a time, uh, drawing power from the Switch Dock's USB-C port or another power adapter. The charger's, uh, vertically, the charger's vertical support can also be removed, improving its portability. Nintendo hasn't revealed pricing for the accessory yet, um, and it uh, has confirmed through the Nintendo North America Twitter account uh, that the charging stand will be available in North America following earlier announcements for Europe and Japan. This new accessory uh, will be part of what is probably Nintendo's last big holiday push for the aging console, joining uh, the Hyrule Edition, Switch Lite, and Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, which uh, both released September 26th, along with Mario Party, sorry, a new Mario Party and a new Mario and Luigi game. Uh, there is a Joy-Con grip that charges. Yes. So this is uh, not much different. No, but this is um this is like a standalone thing cuz it stands up. Yeah, it stands up. I kind of like how it can you could take it off and it doesn't have grips but yeah. you can still play with it like that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Also to the um the the grip you showed before on screen, th those can't charge the NES and Famicom oh, uh, right. controllers. Like this will. It looks like they are making a push for that because uh people are playing NES World Championships like maybe. But it, yeah, it does seem like an odd time to release this because they said the Switch successor is coming soon. Unless this means that this will be compatible with the Switch successor. That's what I'm thinking. I'm I'm thinking if if they're gonna make a new Switch, the rails will probably be different. Yeah. But it's possible that there's some sort of backwards compatibility. So that is possible. Yeah. Uh, I'm checking to see because the Nintendo Switch Online controllers aren't always available. Uh, they're available. They're, the the NES ones are available. Are these the ones that I can't find? I have ones that I can't find. Wasn't that the Super Nintendo one? It's you the can't Super find? Nintendo yeah. one. You're right. These are on sale right now for uh forty seven ninety nine instead oh, wow. of fifty nine ninety. There you go. Uh, these are cool. They feel exactly like the old controllers. So, yeah. Uh, but I just I I'd rather play those games with a more comfortable controller. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. But yeah, uh, you could also just, I don't know, charge your Joy-Con on your Switch. Yeah, but like if you have... You know, if, if you you're have, constantly using multiple Joy-Cons. Yeah, if like you if have like multiple Joy-Cons multiple, and stuff. Games. Like, you know, I have three DualSense controllers and they're, and they're all charged. And when one dies, I like switch it out for another one. So if you play Switch that way, that's a good way to... That's a good option to have, you know. Or like if you're, you know, if somebody's using your Joy-Cons and you know, you need to charge the other ones. Yeah, I can, I can see it. It is yeah. really weird that they would do this so late. Um, you know what? Let's talk about Humble while we're, while okay. we're on a tirade here. Yes. I, I move. Up. Uh, this is, uh, I guess I'll go to the quote tweet first from Wario 64. Uh, this is sad news. Yes. Humble games, which is a publishing label. And also what do they do weekly? What is it? Monthly? How, yeah. how does Humble Bundle work? You use it a lot. I do. So, uh, but I mean, they've changed it so much. Like, so hum like Humble is like a... They're a video game website. They're known for their bundles where they'll bundle together uh, different video games, sometimes books, comic books, uh, PC programs for a very low price, and then they donate most of the money to charity. Um, and they also have a publishing arm for indie games and a lot of indie games like a hat in time signalis unpacking they are published by humble games um this recent news however is about the publishing arm humble games um uh, has reportedly uh, closed down this morning and its 36 person staff was laid off no official comment as of yet update later um and it is unclear what happens to the games yet to be released doesn't this include the Humble Bundle website? No, apparently that's a separate entity. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, the update, Humble has provided a statement, undergoing restructuring rather than a full shutdown. Ongoing and future projects are said to be unaffected, and the restructure has no impact on Humble Bundle's operation. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, we are acutely aware of the profound impact this decision has on our team's a team members at Humble Games and deeply empath empathize with everyone affected. Our team's contributions have been world class. Blah blah blah. Corporate bullshit. Yeah. So, uh, Humble was acquired by IGN's parent company. Yes. And they are the ones who, uh, presumably, are, yeah, are doing. They this. just decided 
just let's cut lop, some people. Yeah, let's lop this off. Uh, they have been known to do that. IGN's yeah. parent company. They yeah. have been uh, pretty. Uh, I don't know the word totalitarian. They've been uh, like fucking trigger happy. I would yeah, they've, say they've been uh, restructuring quite a lot yeah. of companies. I guess you could say. Uh, that sucks because they. What did they publish? Uh, they published a lot of good stuff. Let's see if I can pull up the, the original tweet. Uh, yeah. What's in this? Uh, these are the upcoming games. Uh, Billy Bust Up, Breeze, Lost Skies, um, Monaco 2, Never Alone 2, On Your Tail, Wizard of Legend 2. I'm trying to find like a Wikipedia list or Video games published by published game. Oh, Hat in Time. We yeah. said that already. Um, Slay the Spire. What else? Unpacking. Uh, Signalis, you said that already? Yeah. Uh, Chinatown Detective Agency. Crying Sons. Uh, 413 Deep State. Uh, yeah. One Step from Eden, Moon Scars, Midnight Fight Express. I haven't heard of any of those games. Void <laughs> Bastards, Unsighted. That was a really popular game a couple of years ago. Temtem. Mineko's Night Market. Oh, Temtem. Yeah. Temtem. No, this is one of the Temtem games. Temtem and Temtem Showdown, they published. Uh, Yeah, so there was a lot. Oh, wait, Temtem... Is that a Pokemon? Yeah, that's game? a Pokemon game, isn't it? I'm confusing with some sub, the uh, uh, Disney uh, yeah. puzzle game. <laughs> yeah. All right, so yeah, it's just an indie publishing arm that uh, has been uh, seemingly shut down for uh... well restructuring, but they mm. seem to have like most of the people they let go seem to be from the publishing division. So like, who's gonna publish these games then? Who's gonna like be in contact with the developers to like get the games out there? Yeah. Uh, it's, it seems like maybe they were looking at numbers and said, we don't need this. Yeah. Uh, which is sad. I, I, I don't, I don't know how these companies work. I don't want to yeah. assume too much, but it sounds like they just look at a sheet and go, ah, oh, we got to get rid of this instead yeah. of being like, what went wrong here and how can we fix it? Yeah. You know, cause every, there's been word from a lot of people who worked there and it seemed to have come completely out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they all just. I think this story dropped because they all just started posting on LinkedIn. Yeah. Looking for yeah. other jobs. So that's sad. Uh, anyway, let's do the backlog. 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 Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Hey. This is a show where we uh, go through our collection of games and we pick one at random and talk about it. Regardless, Regardless of whether or not, not we've played, played it. it. Every game we've ever bought, we have a little Excel spreadsheet that we put them in. So it's like 964 games, people. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, what uh, what do we want? 964. Oh, you said it already. Yeah. Uh, we want number 122. 122, and that is... Batman Forever for the Sega Genesis. Ooh. I played the, the hell out of this, this game. This is one of those games that we played a lot, even though it was garbage. This is one of this those is not perfect a... examples of a game that played as a child. I think I knew it was bad, though. Yeah. Sometimes there were games. I think one of the ones we did was Cyborg Justice. Yeah. And that was a game that I played the hell out of. Didn't realize it was bad until yeah. I went back to play. It was one of the first videos on the channel. I think yeah. it was us trying to play Cyborg yeah. Justice. Um, and that game sucks. Yeah. Uh, this, I knew it was bad when we were playing it. Yeah. There, there's just no getting around it. It's um, it's a side-scrolling beat-em-up, um, which was the style at the time. Uh, but the way they made the game, as you can see on screen, it's... Uh, it's three. It's like pre-rendered. It's, it's like it's, it's the PNGs Mortal, of live action. It's the Mortal Kombat style yeah. where they took footage of like actual like real life actors like movement and stuff and mapped it to combat. But the problem is 
it plays like Mortal Kombat. So up is jump. Like the the combat is not like good beat em up combat. It's like stiff fighting game combat. So it doesn't really work in like this kind of setting. The the background art is like all 3D and like they put shit in front of you. So like you can't really see the foreground and stuff. The levels are they're not just like straight, you know, walk to the right levels. They're like labyrinthian. They're almost like, you know, dare I say Metroidvania y. Like, yeah, but they're f- levels. Yeah. So it's like weird. It, it's hard to tell where you need to go. Yeah. There's no direction. Uh, there are a lot of uh, like items and weapons. Yeah. Uh, you get to use a lot of stuff from uh, Batman's yeah. belt. But uh, they're all weird. Yeah. And like and janky. Yeah. Um, Maybe I played this game a lot. Well, we did like uh, the Batman movies. Yeah, obviously. We, we, we yeah, were big you know, fans it, of that. Well, this came out up. in 1995. I was how old was I? I was like set uh like seven or eight. Oh, this is a late Genesis game. Yeah. Right? So like obviously like you know we're gonna want to play the hell out of this. Yeah. You know it was cool because you could play as Batman and Robin. You can do co op. You know or you can do single player as either character, which not a lot of games did at the not a lot of Batman games did. You can see already that there's just a lot of stuff that hangs over in the foreground. Yeah. It's like kind of obscures the yeah. game like a lot. <laughs> it's not a pretty game no it's not a pretty game it's very strange looking though like you mentioned that this is the mortal Kombat style yeah but it's not exactly like mortal Kombat. like 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 this mortal Kombat kind of did a good job with that style this did some weird shit this looks like weird collages so this game was uh so mortal Kombat obviously was made by midway you know when it was ported to console um Probe Entertainment and Long Island Zone Acclaim uh, handled the port job of that. Probe and Acclaim also made Batman Forever. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing they said, hey, why don't we just make it like Mortal Kombat, our most popular game? Well, A, that's not really our game, and B, you can't really do that with a size tone beat up And of course, Long Island Zone Acclaim, they're like, yes, you can. And that's what they did. Look at what this guy did. How would you ever know to do this in the game? Look, he just enters this room and just, just friggin' grapples up. Yeah, and like, how would you ever know to do yeah, that? Yeah, there's like <laughs> no way to know how to do that. Again, 1995. It's not like there's guides or anything mm-hmm. to like tell you what to do. And, and and I don't know if you've noticed, but this whole game through, this whole gameplay right now. It's been the same enemy every time. Yeah, <laughs> that guy has not changed. Yeah, his I, name's changed. Yeah, but. It's been that guy this whole time. Yeah, like the enemy variety, like it changes level to level, but like they're the same enemy type. Yeah. They just have different looks and different walk cycles. Uh, f- yeah, this game was released on the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. We were Genesis kids, so we had that version. Oh, what uh, are we looking at? Oh, this is Genesis. Yeah. yeah. How different were the two versions? I don't think they were that different at all. Um. The Angry Video Game Nerd actually has a video on Batman Forever, and like he actually encapsulates all the problems with it perfectly. So feel free to watch his video on the subject. Because well, like the SNES version looks way different. Yeah, I mean, there this they're, looks better. Well, yeah, the the SNES was like a higher spec machine, so like of course it's gonna look better. But the Sega Genesis had blast processing. Yeah, that just made it fast. <laughs> Yeah, look how pi- it's so much more pixelated. Yeah. That's so weird. Well, uh, yeah, so this is a bad game. Is do, it a bad game? Do we have game? any scores for this? Uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, Computer Gaming Monthly gave it a 70 out of 100. Okay. Uh, That's not terrible, here, actually. Uh, GamePro gave it a negative review. They remarked that the graphics are technically impressive, but dull due to their lack of on-screen objects and interesting backgrounds and concluded that the sluggish gameplay... Uh, mediocre graphics and weak sound really kick this cart uh, to the bat curb. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not great. Yeah, there there were some cool ideas with all of the different tools that Batman could use. Like, yeah. I think I just saw him like throw like a sonic boom thing that like makes the enemies go ah, like stuns them. Yeah. Uh, so there was some cool juggling between stuff like that, but for the most part, it was a pretty uh, pretty lame beat em up game yeah, and what's and what i think what sucks too is that like in this era like there were good batman games available 
Uh, Batman Returns on SNES was a, was also a side scrolling beat 'em up, but that was fun. Uh, you had the Adventures of Batman and Robin on SNES and Genesis, two very different games with two very satisfying experiences. Uh, and then this game comes along and it's just like, let's do what those games did, but wrong. There have been a lot of bad Batman games. Yeah. I think after this one, there was a pretty uh, low point in Batman. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of yeah, really there terrible Batman games. There wasn't Batman really a games. good Batman game for a while. I know people like Batman Vengeance. I haven't played it yet. The Batman Begins game was okay. Uh, and then we got the Arkham games. So at least there was that. I noticed you left out Dark Tomorrow. We do have there, a backlog episode. There, we have a Dark backlog Tomorrow. on Dark Tomorrow. And there's a reason why I left out Dark Tomorrow. <laughs> All right, uh, so I I don't know about this game. Uh, maybe try it. I, you know, I'm getting a little nostalgia from watching this game. There's a lot of nostalgia for it, but like it's nostalgia for all the wrong reasons. You know, like yeah, it's very prototypical of like you know when you're a kid, you have you know you don't have a lot of games, but you have like one or two games that you play all the time, regardless of whether or not they're good. That this is, is a prime example of that. For sure, you know we we had beaten the Sonic games, we had beaten. You know, we played the Mortal Kombat games to death. You know, all the other Genesis games we had, Vector Man, you know, and then here was Batman Forever. Like, okay, we're going to play this game. We're going to keep playing it because this is all we got. Yeah, so uh, maybe don't go yeah. play it. There's plenty of other Batman games you could try. Uh, There's plenty of other Batman games on Genesis you could try. True. Thanks for watching the backlog, everybody. We'll see you at a podcast sometime. And if yeah. you're watching the podcast now, stay here. Everyone else, goodbye. Bye. Uh, all right. Let's talk about esports. Come to the Olympics. I put this in here. Okay. Uh, Olympic esports games officially approved by IOC. Yes, the International Olympic Committee. Uh, this is per Dexerto. The International Olympic Committee has voted to approve the creation of the Olympic esports games in its 142nd season. The inaugural event will be hosted in Saudi Arabia in 2025. Oh, I boy. <laughs> I was wondering why Saudi Arabia was paying for this. Um, the committee voted on creating the games. Just creating the games? The committee voted on creating the games just over a week after the IOC announced its partnership with the National Olympic Committee of Saudi Arabia to host the tournament on July 12th. Some fans and industry veterans criticized the initial announcement over the choice of host country. The IOC voted unanimously to create the new event, but has not nailed down any specifics such as the host city venue dates or which esports titles will be featured. Quote, this is truly a new era for the IOC with the uh, confirmation by the IOC session of the creation of the Olympic esports games. We are keeping up with the pace of the digital revolution. The esports community represented in our esports commission has enthusiastically engaged with the initiative blah 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 we don't know anything about what games they're gonna pick yet or or not um i think there was some speculation put out let me see if i can find it uh i think they don't want any violence so there will not be any shooting game most likely okay uh that was what I heard. Okay, so this is by it's per Slasher on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, sorry, go ahead. The, the IOC have unanimously voted for the Olympic Games. Uh, FPS and shooters will not be included. Likely game list will include uh, League of Legends, Rocket League, Street Fighter, Tekken, IC Racing, or iRacing, uh, NBA 2K, FIFA, and mobile games. I don't know why you would just say mobile games. <laughs> That's like so broad. Yeah. Uh, there's no chance of of Counter Strike, Call of Duty, yeah. or even Valorant, but it's possible Fortnite is granted an exception because uh, there's no like blood. Yeah. Uh, and there's already a relationship with Epic. Uh, Nintendo's family friendly approach fits. However, I don't see a license being granted. Don't think we get Smash Melee or Ultimate. Yeah. Oh, definitely not Melee. It's so weird that, like, I believe, I'm, I agree with that, that uh, I don't see Nintendo granting a license for Smash Brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's also a lot of other people that would need to, you know, approve the license, too, if you're going to play Ultimate. Because mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of other characters that people have licenses, other yeah. companies have licenses for. Um, 
But man, it's the Olympics. You would think that they would want their game there, you know? Yeah. So it's weird that Nintendo has all of these rules around their their IP. Like I mean, that. what was it? The the, the Tokyo Olympics, uh, the Prime Minister of Japan like showed up with the Mario hat. So like I think there's a there's precedent for Nintendo being a part of the Olympics. I feel like they would they would, you know, allow the game, but it's like Mario and Sonic are the Olympic Games. I know. So <laughs> put them in, at the Olympic Games. You know, they would just probably have like some sort of like rules and regulations or like they might have some say in how the Olympic, you know, esports ruling works. You know, they would probably have they want to have control over the game. Yeah. You know, basically. I mean, that would be insane. Uh, yeah. Right now, a Smash Brothers esports is in the toilet. Like yeah. like they're it it's really there's nothing going on there. Yeah. I was watching Evo last weekend and just sitting there really disappointed that uh, there's no Smash Brothers yeah. right now. Because I mean, yeah, sh- uh, there were some cool clips coming out of Street Fighter and stuff, yeah. but like watching it, uh, I couldn't get into it. I I need I need Smash Brothers or else I I don't understand what's going on. Uh, also, not having Valorant is weird. That's the only other esports game that I can like watch and like know what's <laughs> going on. Um. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to do... I doubt they'll even do Fortnite. You know, there probably won't be any, like, shooting-based games. Uh, it'll probably be, like, racing games, um, you know, f- actual sports games, like of uh, NBA 2K or whatnot. This is, sounds like a lot of games. Maybe, you know, maybe they'll do fighting games because, like, they do, like, jujitsu and, like, boxing at the Olympics. Yeah, you can't do this and not have Street Fighter. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, I I would like to I would like to see Fortnite. I I, yeah. I think Fortnite could work. Uh, I mean, what they have shooting stuff. Have, yeah, but have, you don't shoot other people. They should. They should. Yeah. I mean, they have fencing. They could do yeah. sword fighting. A sword fighting game. Yeah, just put on a fencing suit yeah. and shoot each other. <laughs> <laughs> Overwatch, anyone? Yeah, it could be Overwatch. Yeah, I think that's rated T. I don't know uh we'll have to see it's gonna be weird games it's mm-hmm. not gonna be games that make sense I feel yeah like. but maybe that'll make the olympics interesting uh hey mr rock pr thanks for the two months 16 months of bliss oh i'm sorry 16 months keep being the coolest wolf bros out there thanks no promise are there other wolf bros sloth thanks for the eight months peggle two for the olympics there you go Uh, all right. What do we got now? Oh, before I forget, I did. I forgot to bring us up in the beginning. I did bring some L8 from Kentucky. Oh my god! Thank you so much. Vacation. I figured. <laughs> thank you so much. Everybody know. Everybody who watches this show knows. Every time I go there, I have to bring, you know, the the best regional soda I've ever tasted. Oh, yeah. it's a twist top. So, ooh, look at that smoke. Yeah. I gotta smuggle it in every time i go there like my wife's family is like oh you're bringing back la and i'm like yeah we're just gonna pack the truck like we're smuggling drugs across the border is it only in kentucky yeah you can like order it did you get this at bucky's no i did not get this at bucky's okay. i got this at walmart a couple of points off. The, the best no the best walmart's are south <laughs> they i love southern walmart's they have everything it's kentucky there. south yeah i thought south. kentucky was smack dab in the middle they are considered a southern state oh they're not even in the middle i'm thinking of kansas yeah <laughs> kentucky's kentucky's in the middle i mean i guess if virginia is considered south then yeah. kentucky's considered south. yeah okay I'll, I'll allow it okay if bob allows it then <laughs> uh thank you for, you're welcome for the elliot uh, I also have it in orange at home if you want to try. They it. have orange. They have orange. They have cherry. They have a new straw melon, which is like strawberry and watermelon mix. They have regular ginger ale, which is weird because this is already kind this of is a ginger, ginger ale. ale. Yeah, I um, like the sound of straw melon, yeah. and I like orange. All right, I well, might have to try that. All right, come on over. That's a lot. You got all that? Yeah. Is it like a variety pack, or did you just load up? Like I said, we loaded the car like we were smuggling drugs across the border. Okay. But it was regional soda. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, all right. FTC blasts Microsoft for Game Pass tiers. This is also great news. We should have probably oh, talked yeah, about probably it. Should. All right. So yeah. I'm going to skip down as the original story and up is Microsoft's response. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, has slammed Microsoft's Xbox Game Pass tier changes as a degraded product, citing that by removing the most valuable games from Microsoft's new service, Microsoft has delivered exactly the sort of consumer harm from the merger the FTC had alleged. Microsoft confirmed sweeping changes, including price increases to its Xbox Game Pass subscription service earlier this month. The change comes ahead of October's launch of Black Ops 6, uh, which blops. will include blops, which will include the removal of day one releases for its overhauled basic tier. The FTC's filing with the U.S. Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals added that Microsoft's announcement shows why it's necessary to halt mergers to fully evaluate their likely uh, competitive effects and is inconsistent with what Microsoft said when the FTC initially intervened to prevent its acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Product degradation, removing the most valuable games from Microsoft's new service, combined with price increases for existing users, is exactly the sort of consumer harm from the merger the FTC has alleged, the filing said. Microsoft's price increases and product degradation, combined with Microsoft's reduced investments in output and product quality via employee layoffs, are the hallmarks of a firm exercising market power post-merger. Microsoft promised that the acquisition would benefit consumers by making Call of Duty available on Microsoft's Game Pass on the day it is released on console with no price increase for the service based on the acquisition. Earlier this year, the FTC claimed that it uh, plans to lay off. Sorry. Earlier this year, FTC claimed that its planned layoff of 1,900 people across Xbox and Activision Blizzard went against what was said in court last year in regards to how Activision will remain structurally independent. In continuing its up op its opposition to the deal, the FTC ignores the reality that the deal itself has substantially changed, a Microsoft spokesperson said in a statement to Eurogamer. Uh, since the FTC lost in court last July, Microsoft was required by the UK Competition Authority to restructure the acquisition globally and therefore did not acquire the cloud streaming rights to Activision Blizzard games in the United States. Additionally, Sony and Microsoft signed a binding agreement to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation uh, on even better terms than Sony had before. So, long story short, the FTC... Uh, when we, we talked about how Microsoft had changed Game Pass seemingly for the worse, making it more expensive, introducing a tier that did not have day one games. Yeah, we uh, talked about that pretty extensively on the show. Yeah. Uh, it started with not having day one games, yeah. which is we, we opened the show with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Microsoft seemed to be uh, one of the worst offenders because their whole thing with Game Pass was you can get ga uh, first party games day one on Game Pass. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Starfield came out, the Redfall came out, and For Forza came out. For I almost called it Forfa. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when those games came out, you had to pay to play them early. Yes, uh, and now Game Pass has introduced a tier where you don't even get that. You do not get new games day one at all. Yeah, well, yeah that was a, a leak that happened uh, yeah. that we talked about. And then it was confirmed. And then they also raised the price. Yeah. And all of this shit. And then the FTC, uh, the FTC comes along and basically agreed with us. You know, like, hey, this bullshit. Yeah. So what grounds does the FTC have to say, like, uh, oh, because... Because when the whole, like, lawsuit first happened, when they were trying to acquire Activision Blizzard, yeah. the FTC said, are you going to do shady shit like raise the price of Game Pass and hold back games from entering in Game Pass? Microsoft said, no. Yeah, because uh, they are becoming a monopoly. Yeah. Uh they basically just bought the biggest game on the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, and now they are going to charge a premium for you to play that game. Yeah. So uh, that is uh, why monopolies are bad. So yes. the FTC is like, are you going to do monopoly things? And Microsoft's like, no. no. And then they did. So the FTC is like, hey, remember we talked about this? Yeah. Uh, so Microsoft uh, has hit back. This is an update. Uh, they have hit back against the FTC saying it is wrong and misleading to call its revised Game Pass tiers degraded and stating the commission barely mentioned concerns about subscriptions at the trial. Earlier this month, Microsoft announced changes to its gaming subscription service, Game Pass, to provide customers uh, valuable options at different price points, Microsoft said in court papers filed uh, Friday, July 19th. 
Microsoft is offering a new service tier, Game Pass Standard, which offers access to hundreds of back catalog games and multiplayer functionality for $14.99 a month. It is wrong to call this a degraded version of the discontinued Game Pass for console offering. That discontinued product did not offer multiplayer functionality, which had to be purchased separately uh, for an additional $9.99 a month, making the total cost $20.98 a month. Uh, while Game Pass Ultimate's price will increase from $16.99 to $19.99 a month, the service will offer more value through many new games available day and date. Among them is the upcoming release of Call of Duty, which has never before been available on subscription day and date. Oh, hold on. Hold on. They're saying... Yeah, wait. The, the... That's, That's not, not that doesn't, doesn't equate. They're, they're, they're saying, saying Game Pass, Pass for console yes. was ten dollars. Yes. You had to then also buy Xbox Live Gold yes. to play online, which yes. was an additional ten dollars. Yes. But Game Pass Ultimate was fifteen dollars. Yes. Which is cheaper. Yeah. And that's being increased. Yeah. And they're saying it. Yeah. So that's a horrible argument. <laughs> That's such a bad argument. The, the arguments don't get any better. Uh, <laughs> they go on. The FTC barely mentions subscription at trial, instead focusing on the theory that Microsoft would withhold Call of Duty from Sony's console. The district court correctly rejected that theory, which is, how, which is now further eroded by Microsoft and Sony's 10-year agreement to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation, a contract Sony was thrilled to enter. <laughs> Microsoft also stated that the FTC has now uh, retrospectively shifted focus to a subscription service. Setting aside that it is common for businesses to change service offerings over time, the FTC case uh, in all of its alleged markets has allowed uh, has always been premised on a virtual foreclosure, i.e. that Microsoft would withhold Call of Duty from rivals and therefore harm competition, Microsoft said. But even in the alleged subscription market, Call of Duty is not being withheld from anyone who wants it, and there remains no evidence anywhere of harm to competition. Sony's subscription service continues to thrive, even as they put a uh, few new games into their subscription day and date, unlike Microsoft. The transaction thus continues to benefit co uh, competition and consumers, exactly what the district court, the district court correctly found it. But Microsoft is removing the day and date games yes. from people yeah their arguments are so bad yeah i this is real time me turning on microsoft i used to be <laughs> i used to, when when the first when the ftc shit first went down mm. i was like all on microsoft side because i truly believed in the the game pass model yeah and now i'm completely on the opposite side because they they really did the worst shit they could possibly yeah. do. For, they made it sound so good at the beginning, and now they're slowly removing all of the good things about just, Game Pass and making yeah, them worse. Yeah, it's just getting worse and worse over yeah. time. Yeah, they're really uh, going back on their word like yeah. over and over again. It's horrible. Um, And like, you know, the whole bringing Sony subscription service into it, like, they're doing okay, and they don't have day and date you know, releases on I got news for you, Microsoft. Neither do you. That's the whole thing. That was your game. one thing. That was your one thing that like put you head and shoulders above Sony's stupid subscription service. Uh, and you blew it. You threw that out the window yeah. all because you had to own Activision. You didn't want Call of Duty. You wanted to buy King and have the mobile market. But really, you know, there was no, nothing wrong with owning Call of Duty as well. Not, not only did they start making you pay to play the game day one but also they don't have any games that release they don't have any first party games i know the last couple first party games that you had orza and freaking uh uh starfield and and redfall yeah you had to pay to play the game early mm -hmm. or 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 paid access so you fucked up microsoft yeah. i hope that they get slammed by the ftc for this that's absolutely insane. Yeah. No, it's... They keep, you know... They bought Activision Blizzard at the expense of Game Pass. They, they are screwing up Game Pass because of that stupid uh, that, merger. That's insane because yeah. that should make Game Pass a better value. Yeah. But instead, they're, 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 they're like working around all of their sh bullshit 
yeah. to try to, to suck more money out of you. They're trying to literally warp reality to make Game Pass work. Yeah, yeah. When, when really it's just, hey, Call of Duty's on Game Pass. That should be all you need to do yeah. to get people to want Game Pass is say, hey, now you could stream Call of Duty because you could not do that before. Yeah. And uh, if you want to play it, day one, you, all there you need is a Game Pass subscription, 20 bucks. That's great. Yeah. But instead, they're doing all this other wacky bullshit. Yeah. Pay to play it early, uh, fucking raising the subscription price and yeah. whatever because they already spent $76 million. So Billion. 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 Oh, so sorry, dollars, billion. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's crazy. And I hope that they get uh, slammed by the FTC. Yeah. But it doesn't stop there. Because next article, Microsoft reportedly considering cloud only Game Pass tier. Just weeks after at Microsoft's major Xbox Game Pass shakeup, a new report claims the company is mulling over a variety of additional subscription tiers in a bid to expand the service's reach, including a tier offering access to Game Pass catalogs exclusively via cloud gaming. Uh, that's according to Windows Central's Jez Corden, who in a lengthy article discusses Game Pass's future, claims to have heard from sources that Microsoft is working towards a cloud-only version that would be cheaper and more approachable than Game Pass Ultimate. The aim is said to be twofold, with Microsoft hoping the tier will appeal to those put off by the upfront cost of a console, as well as to existing owners of competing consoles who don't want to buy an Xbox but might find the Game Pass catalog appealing. It's reportedly also intending to monetize the cloud-only service further by offering digital ownership of individual games in its catalogs um, should a user wish to buy something outright. Furthermore, it seems Microsoft's uh, Game Pass friends and family plan experiment isn't dead either based on what Corden calls a very tentative rumor. Uh, a version of the plan which would enable five people to share uh, access to Game Pass Ultimate at a significant discount was trialed between September 2022 and August 2023, but it never progressed to a worldwide release. Additionally, Corden says one initiative Microsoft had previously hinted at, uh, hinted it was considering an ad-based tier for Game Pass isn't something it's actively working towards right now. Talk of further expansions to Microsoft's existing Game Pass tiers comes just two weeks after the company confirmed sweeping changes to a subscription service in the run-up to October's launch of Black Ops 6. These changes include the removal of day one releases uh, for its overhaul basic tier, plus price increases across the board. I'm actually surprised they haven't done this already. Uh, I don't hate the idea of a Game Pass tier that is only streaming. Yeah. Uh, I would hate it if it causes a restructuring of all of the price points which yeah. it sounds like it, it is yeah uh but when you when i hear about streaming like the this happened you know back when stadia was a thing yeah like the value in streaming is uh i don't have any hardware mm -hmm. and i want to play the latest game the easiest way possible and sometimes it's as easy as ten dollars for the month i play in my browser and it if you've never done that before it's surprisingly good the, the yeah. quality of, of game that you get for such a little price and low power like if you have a chromebook for high school yeah you can fucking play uh potentially call of duty yeah with your friends on your little chromebook uh all you need is, an, is an, like a decent internet connection it doesn't even need to be that great um and i think that is worth a game pass subscription or a game pass tier I just don't trust them to uh, price it accordingly and not have it affect all of the other tiers of yeah. Game Pass. I mean, <sighs> Game Pass is already kind of confusing because you had uh, the console version, you had the PC version, and then you had Ultimate, and games. Uh, Xbox Live Gold was a separate thing that you needed to play multiplayer. Then they rolled Xbox Live Gold into Game Pass as Game Pass Core, and then they added Standard, and now there's PC, and there's Ultimate, and now they're going to add another tier, which is different from all the other ones. You know, we talk, when we were talking before about special editions of games, you know, the infamous case was Watch Dogs. They had to release a chart of all the different versions of Watch Dogs and all the different DLC you got with each different version of the game. Microsoft had to fucking do that with Game Pass. You know, their support uh, Twitter tweeted out, you know, a graph of like all the different tiers of Game Pass that they have now. And that sucks. That sucks that there's like, you know, all these different confusing versions of what is effectively the same thing. It, it's crazy because there's like, like there's a, a million people that work at Microsoft. Yeah. A million people that work on the Xbox product. 
a lot of them make six figures just doing marketing. Yeah. And they, not one of them was like, we should make this simpler. I think that's the problem. The fact that you have like all these thousands of people who work there and it's got to go through all these different hands mm -hmm. and like stuff. And it just gets more and more confusing the more and more it goes down the line. I recently, what was it recently? It was, came out that Valve only has like 400 employees. I was... No, it is less than that. Yeah. It's like insanely small. Yeah, but I, like, look at all the stuff they have. Like, look at you know Steam OS. Look at uh, the Steam storefront as a whole. Look at all the features you got. Look at the Steam Deck itself. Three, uh, 2021, 336 people. Yeah. And I think only 70 work on Steam. Yeah. <laughs> like, not, like, all the... But they all make a fuck ton of money. Yeah. They all make uh, well over six figures. Some yeah. of them even seven figures so at, at like not even that high of yeah. a level there. So, but like the point remains, they have like a small, they have a small head count, a small but well paid, a small but well paid <laughs> head count. Yeah, and like you know the products they release, you know they're not confusing. It's not like you know you have to do math to figure out if it's good or not. All right, but I'll argue that. That's because they don't release much. Yeah. <laughs> what they release is great, and they ax a lot of what yeah. they work on. True. Uh, Microsoft is it? I mean, you know, lately they haven't been releasing a lot either. Yeah. But, but you're right. I mean, there's something wrong with some of these companies. Like, mm -hmm. the, the basic fundamentals of marketing is you want to make things as easy as possible yeah. for people to understand, and you want to eliminate the barriers to purchasing your product and mm -hmm. one of the barriers can be needlessly confusing tears so something i gotta work on as a hundreds of billion dollar company yeah they are. all right let's plot through the rest of this okay all right the rest of it is kind of do we have to talk about halo TV show? Well, I just wanted to bring it up. The Halo TV show was canceled after two seasons at I Paramount Plus. I can't think of the Halo TV show without thinking about Master Chief's ass. Yeah. And I've never even seen it. It's I, th a, I think I, I think it's just my brain is imagining that I was saw Master just, Chief's ass. It was ass. just a weird show to begin with. Like, it it was also trying to be the game, but also like trying to just be its own weird ass thing. And like, none of it worked. Um, It looked shockingly cheap. For a science fiction show in you know the 2020s, you know it looked like a 90s Star Trek show episode. It's which because the Master they, Chief suit looked good, but everything else just looked cheap. There's plenty of uh, examples of video game shows working great. Yes, like uh, Fallout worked really well. Has 16 Emmy nominations, including Outstanding Drama Series. And best actor for my man Walton Goggins. Oh, we we should before, we should say we were talking about Halo because it got canceled. Yes. <laughs> oh, I, I said I brought it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Fallout got a bunch of nominations. Yeah. I only saw good. the first episode. It was okay. I have, still haven't seen Fallout. I saw the first episode of the Halo show. Didn't need to see the rest of it. I think it's just it's a sad end because like you know Halo that was something that Microsoft really wanted to work as like a different media. You know, they tried to get a movie made for like two decades. They had Peter Jackson attached. They had all these other people. Then they were, it was going to be the flagship show for the Xbox One when that was going to be a multimedia device. Steven Spielberg was producing it. They trotted him out to say, hey, I'm working on Halo. I directed Jurassic Park, you know, and then it only for it to get, you know, dumped onto what was arguably the worst of the major streaming services uh, and for it to be as bad as it was. Like it, it's it's a it's unfortunate. It's a sad ending for what you know. I think for years now was like touted as going to be that was going to be the one to break the video game movie curse. I mean, no way in hell did it ever have any hope of doing that. No, uh, but other others have. Yes. Uh, uh, so Last of Us, we saw Last of Us was great. Yeah, and now Fallout Actually, is, is doing the same thing. I never finished the Last of Us. I got all the way to the Left Behind DLC <laughs> uh, in the show. Yeah, and I was. You know what happened was I was just like I know what happens. Yeah, and I just didn't want to watch it. Yeah, I I I haven't seen the show, but a lot of my coworkers have. Did you I, see the one episode though with Nick Offerman? No, just watch that. Okay, because you don't need any other context yeah. Yeah. to see that they were one all, episode. They were all telling me it was like, oh, so yeah, well, what are you up to in the Last of Us TV show? Like, well, I don't know. It was like kind of weird. All of a sudden, like Joel just murdered a bunch of doctors. Like, 
Oh, you're up to that part. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what, like, I, <laughs> yeah. I know what happened. So, yeah. like, I'm not excited about Yeah, it's about exactly it. the same. But there's a one-off episode that has nothing to do with yeah. anything <laughs> that is great. So, honestly, that's like a little mini movie and just yeah. watch that. And then you don't have to see anything yeah. else because everything else you know already. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Uh, you know what I have to do? I have to finish Andor. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm watching, I, like... A little piece of me wants to watch uh, uh, the new show, Acolyte. Acolyte. Yeah. I'm not interested in that time period at all. I'm mm -hmm. hearing a lot of mixed things. Right. But I keep hearing great things about Andor, and I'm already halfway through that, so I just got to finish that. Did you get to him in prison? He just got to prison. Okay. It it goes I, into high gear from there. I heard. Yes. That's why I, and I like, need to finish it. Trust that. me when I say, like, Andor might not be your favorite Star Wars but you can definitely tell the significant difference in quality between an Andor and a Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Well, well or even like something you like, like Mandalorian versus Andor. Well, there I is a love, difference. Uh, Rogue One. Yeah. So I'm all, I'm all, yeah. I'm all for it. Anyway, uh, what else? Big publishers don't support live service games for long enough. This is a weird one. Uh, Digital Extreme CEO uh, Steve Sinclair has said that game companies must have more faith in live service projects, even if they struggle at launch. In an interview with VGC, Sinclair laments the trend of large companies in live service space abandoning titles quickly uh, following launch stumbles. Uh, they think the release is make or break, and it's not. They have a financial way to be persistent, and they never do it, uh, he says. Uh, it comes out. It comes out, it doesn't work, and they throw it away. He added, uh, isn't that a shame when you put so many years of your life into uh, iterating on those systems or building technology or building the start of a community, and because the operating costs are high, you get terrified when you see the numbers drop and you leave. We see this uh, with amazing releases that I think have a massive potential, and I think they eject too soon. Uh, so this is the Digital Extreme. They made Warframe. So they have success in this market. And he's saying that, like, you know, you have to stick with it over an extended period of time in order to make the game work. And to an extent, he's right. You know, a lot of these live service games, like, they're not hits right out of the gate. Or rarely are they ever hits right out of the gate. You know, like, Warframe had a slow burn. And, like, it's now just chugging along as a fairly successful live service game. You yeah, know? so Warframe has been around for a really long time. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. Uh, I haven't played too much of it warframe released in 2013 so like yeah it's over 11 years every old time i point. jump into it i'm surprised the first time i played it was because it was one of the first ps4 launch titles yeah it was like one of the only games and it was free yeah. so i played it and i was like this game's pretty good and then i stopped and then it came out on the switch it was one of the best ports on the switch so mm -hmm. i played it and it was awesome uh and then i jump back into it every once in a while uh and it's great yeah uh he's kind of right um I mean, you see it with Warframe. It became very successful. Uh, I'm there's a forum post here that says uh, that it surpassed CS:GO for uh, what, this is a Warframe forum. It says surpassed CS:GO and became the most profitable uh, free-to-play game on Steam. Wow, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. This was as of February of this mm -hmm. year, so that was after CS:GO two, I guess. Yeah. Um. So, the Warframe guy's right about how. The article that you're reading, uh, the top of it, the top banner is, uh, what's that game? Anthem. Anthem. Yeah. Which was, the plug was immediately pulled on that game. And that's yeah. really a shame because that game had some potential. Yeah. A lot of these games have potential. Knockout City closed after two years. Um, Anthem closed after two years. Yeah. Uh, two years? Two years. Yeah. It felt like a lot less than that with Anthem. <laughs> yeah. Anthem felt well, like Well, because it, it came out and immediately people were like, no, nah, this game sucks. Yeah. And like EA just got cold feet and like just slowly like stopped supporting it. You also see like uh Rainbow Six Siege, that's not free to play, but uh that turned around really yeah. really I mean it took a while. It yeah. was a slow burn, but it they, they turned it around pretty good. Yeah, I see what he's saying, but like at the same time, like if every company is trying to put out a game like this when you're already playing a game like this, you know, yeah. there there's really is like you know, it's understandable why they get shut down so quickly. You know, every game wants to be Fortnite, but everyone's already playing a game like Fortnite called Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, some of these games, uh, they get them out into people's hands and then decide what they want to fix. Yeah. Uh, I've been trying to play Zenless Zone Zero. Right. That's like a Genshin Impact. Uh, it's made by the Genshin Impact. People. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty rough. It's not as good as I think that it can be. Yeah. But... 
they will definitely fix that with over the next year. Yeah. And I think that it will be a little unrecognizable compared to how it is right now. Even Destiny did the same thing. Uh, I kind of hate how Destiny changed. Uh, that I think they did the opposite of what they should, but Destiny 2 is completely unrecognizable for what it was when it yeah. launched. In fact, the whole campaign just isn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, he's got a point that things can turn around for these live service games, but uh, I think the launch has to be compelling in some way. Yeah. You need a reason to want yeah. to come back to it. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, we got Bethesda employees unionized. Yay. Hooray. Uh, what do I do with it? Bethesda Game Studio developers form wall-to-wall -wall union that includes artists, designers, and programmers. Developers at Bethesda Game Studios have elected to unionize with the Communications Workers of America, a national labor organization that has also worked with Activision Blizzard employees on collective bargaining efforts. Unlike some game industry unions uh, whose membership is isolated to QA de departments, ZeniMax QA workers unionized last year, for instance. Um, this is a wall-to-wall -wall union, says the CWA, and was formed by votes uh, from 241 artists, engineers, programmers, and designers across three offices. It is the first of its kind at Microsoft owns at a Microsoft-owned studio. Bethesda Game Studios, which was spun off from publisher Bethesda Softworks, is the company most people are referring to when they say Bethesda. The Todd Howard-led developer of the modern Fallout and Elder Scrolls games, as well as last year's Starfield. Microsoft acquired ZeniMax Media in 2021, a purchase which included not just the two Bethesdas, uh, the two Bethesdas, uh, but also a number of other subsidiary studios, such as id Software. Earlier this year, Microsoft shuttered four of those studios, including uh, Arcane Austin and Tango Gameworks. In the run-up to Microsoft's other huge acquisition, the purchase of Activision Blizzard, the tech giant strategically positioned itself as union-friendly. In this instance, it doesn't appear to have put up a fight. The CWA says that Microsoft has already recognized the union. The next step will be for Microsoft and the union members to agree on a contract, which may or may not go as smoothly. As a democratic organization, we seek to empower the collective wishes of our studios, workers, having a safe, sustainable, and equitable work environment for all, announced a newly formed union, uh, which is called, which is calling itself 1BGS. Uh <clears throat> Having a proper seat at the discussion table allows us to turn those wishes into reality. The new, the new union includes developers for, at three Bethesda Game Studios locations in the U.S. A fourth studio in Montreal voted to unionize with the Canadian brand. So this is important specifically for games because uh, there's been a lot of really terrible uh, bureaucracy yeah. in games. And uh, this is a lot of layoffs and shit. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, there's a lot that uh uh i don't know there's a lot of like uh workers rights that need to be uh yeah especially in gaming with games yeah. yeah so uh being able to unionize and and uh have a collective voice against your your uh, higher ups mm -hmm. in a big studio like bethesda pretty important yeah you know especially because they just saw microsoft shut down you know, their sister studios like Arcane Austin yeah. and ZeniMax. We've been talking and, uh, a lot this episode about Microsoft's yeah. problems. So Yeah. Not ZeniMax, Grasshopper. But yeah. yeah. So specifically for games, I think that that's uh you're basically turning the company into a democracy. So yeah. That's good. That sounds good. Uh all right, next is all about Capcom. It's the Capcom Lightning Round. Capcom has no plans to stop releasing physical games. Woo. Uh there we go. Publishers like Capcom are thankfully sticking with physical media, even as many others in the industry are tossing it aside. Given that a significant number of end users demand physical games, we currently do not expect uh, to eliminate physical products, Capcom said in an official Q&A when asked about the decreased number of players who buy physical copies. Um, yeah, I also saw an article where like physical games still account like even though it's like dwindled significantly since digital markets have like opened up it still accounts for a significant number of sales for like a lot of titles especially high profile titles like uh apparently god of war ragnarok sold more physically than it did digitally and i think for big budget games like people actually want to go and get that or like give those as gifts yeah and stuff. it's nice to have or if I'm going to spend $70 on something, it's nice yeah. to physically be able to to hold it for, yeah. for especially a big high profile game like yeah. like like that. Um also like 
I can see there being value in going to Target and being like, oh, wait, I'm at Target. Yeah. Didn't that game come out? Yeah. And then you go over there and, and pick it up. Make sure to check the back because apparently the new games like are in the back end cap now at Target instead of the front. Or at least every Target I go to now. What's in the front then? Books. iPhones. iPhones and books. <laughs> yeah. Who gets an iPhone at Target? I don't know, man. I did see a, a weird looking guy looking yeah. at the iPhones at Target. <laughs> he was playing around with them. Uh, and then also Marvel vs. Capcom producer says development team has been has big dreams for crossovers. Uh, speaking to Dick Stero, the co- uh, the collections, uh, the Marvel vs. Capcom uh, fighting collection producer uh, Shuhei Matsumoto discussed the future of the franchise. The development team at Capcom has big dreams, he said. Maybe there is an opportunity for a new Marvel vs. Capcom game. Maybe there is an opportunity for a new Capcom-based SNK game. Well, he admitted he doesn't know if that will happen in the short term. The team can at least reintroduce these past legacy games to a new audience, to people who may not have had the opportunity to play it because it might uh, not be out on modern or current platforms. Basically, what he's saying is, buy this collection, show that you're interested in this stuff, and then maybe we'll get Marvel vs. Capcom 4. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's already a big deal that they uh, re-released Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Yeah. Because that's been absent from storefronts for a really yeah. long time. So uh, hopefully it does well for them. Uh, I liked Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Marvel vs. Uh, Capcom 3 was good. Yeah, I didn't yeah. like it. Uh, like, I didn't go back to it too much, but... yeah. One of my favorite things in these stupid little fighting games is just playing the campaign mode for each character and seeing the little title card at the end. Yeah. <laughs> just, just dumb yeah, shit yeah. like that uh, is is enough for me. Yeah, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was very good. Um, they had did a Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, which was very bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, do not recommend that Wasn't at it all. Was it just 3? No. Added shit? No, no. It was a completely different it was, game? It was, it, was, it was supposed to be a different game, but like... It they, looked exactly the same. No, because they had to import characters... They imported character models from three into this new game, but the new game had a different engine. So the, uh, a lot of characters looked weird. Okay. Yeah. That's so, so also it was 2v2 instead of 3v3. And like you had to collect the infinity stones and it was all just, just dumb. Okay. So hopefully we get a proper Marvel vs. Capcom 4. Finally, great news. Capcom says it's always considering what's next for Mega Man. <laughs> Me too. Uh, uh, during the 45th general shareholders meeting, Capcom mentioned how Mega Man is still one of the company's most highly value, valued IPs, and it's always considering how to create games for it on uh, an ongoing basis. Um, another question touched on the results of the recent Capcom Super Elections, acknowledging Mega Man's popularity in the poll, um, and asking if this would have any influence on the future of the franchise. Capcom noted again how it values all of its IPs, including Mega Man, and was always considering how to utilize them in both games and media. So don't worry about the fact Capcom hasn't done anything new with Mega Man in recent times, as the Blue Bomber is always being considered for future outings. I don't... That doesn't sound very reassuring at all. No. It just says, we're always considering a Mega Man game. I'm sure they're looking at Mega Man 11, and they're like, that game didn't really sell much. I don't know if Mega Man's, you know, yeah. going to be good for us. Mega Man 11 was terrible. Yeah, Mega Man 11 very wasn't bad very game. good. Uh, you could totally make something great with Mega Man. Yeah. You can make a lot of great shit with Mega Man. People yeah. love Mega yeah. Man. Yeah. I don't know how you fuck it up that bad. <sighs> you got to do like a Sonic Mania type deal. I, w- I mean, that that's one way to go. I'm more of the line of like, maybe you just create a whole new Mega Man experience from scratch like from the ground up like a like a new series yeah like you have mega man you have mega man x Actually, you have mega battle man, network battle you have zero ne- yeah you're saying make another one make another one and like it, it has to be like yeah i mean they've had success doing fairly that for a different while. from like what the other mega man games were maybe you just bite the bullet and do a 3d mega man like legend <laughs> well not an rpg like a platform okay. shooter okay. you know something along those lines because like you know, Mega Man is popular. People like Mega Man, but you want to do a modern. If you want to do a modern Mega Man, you have to make a modern video game. I think that's what's made Mega Man so successful is doing all of those different yeah. versions of Mega Man. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I agree. I also think there's plenty of room to go back to the Mega Man series yeah. that you have already, but you need to get people who are like making the fan games or doing or, yeah. who are really passionate about it to do it. Mega Man 11 it it was a half-assed like yeah. flash game. It, like it was it, 
it didn't seem like anybody was passionate about yeah. that game. Anyway, that's it. Yeah, we We're did done. it. Uh, now this. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! This one's by Shadow X Twilight, and it says, Good morning. And it's a picture of Shadow the Hedgehog holding a gun. It says, Sometimes 2 p.m. is good morning. That was me today. <laughs> uh, I got up at 6 this morning like an asshole. I got up at 2 like an asshole. And I didn't do anything that I needed to do today. <laughs> All right. We're going to talk to you guys now. Yes. Sorry when people have comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. And don't make me regret it. Yeah. Uh, We got... Oh. No, I'm going to skip last week. Yeah. Uh, we got Turbo Cat. It says 15 to 20 minutes is the shortest content that I usually like nowadays, mainly because I like putting things on and not having to find something else for longer periods of time. I definitely find myself gravitating more towards longer and longer content. Now, that's interesting to say on a podcast. Yeah. I think they're referring to how uh, Zion's uh, DS Street Pass video is an hour and 20 minutes. Oh. And I think I talked about how my videos are usually like 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. It's, I hate like, you know, I'm trying, it's hard to find like a good balance of like what to watch on YouTube. Because sometimes I just want to watch something that's five minutes and nothing is five minutes on YouTube. Yeah, I will sometimes not watch a video because it's too long, but sometimes I'll watch a video that's over an hour long. I like... Lindsay Ellis just put up a new video on YouTube. It's like her first video on YouTube in like years. And it's like two hours long. And like I have no time to like sit down and watch it. But like meanwhile, you I'm watching. It. What? You pick at it. I know. I should just start doing that. But like her videos are like really like smart and intellectual. So it's like one of those things I actually want to like sit down and watch. It's not like I'm watching uh, Robo's um, weekly action figure rewind, which are half an hour. <laughs> but it's just him talking about toys for half an hour. You know? So. I got to train myself because that's why I don't watch shows or movies yeah. because I'm like, oh, it's too long. I don't have a half an hour to watch this. I've only yeah. got a few. But then I'll sit on TikTok for an hour. Yeah. So it's a little trap I fall into. Yeah. It's like that. You know, like we're watching my wife and I are watching the bear right now and I want to like actually sit down and watch the bear. But like, you know, sometimes life gets in the way and get distracted and stuff. It's like, it's not, I'm not enjoying this. What? what what's. Is it folding ideas? What's the guy? No, the line line goes up guy. What's yeah, his folding name? ideas? Stan Olson. Yeah, that James Rolfe video. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. That was an incredible video. That was a great video. I've watched that at least twice. <laughs> and that's the problem. Like I don't have time. In an hour and twenty minutes yeah. long, but yeah. it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's a me. Eric says I like long videos personally. Bob doesn't make YouTube shorts. His videos are long. YouTube pants. <laughs> that's a good one. It took me a that's long a time one. to understand what he's talking about. I do make shorts, by the way. I just I haven't uploaded a short in a really long time. I'm very bad at short form content. Kayla Fox says, "Sad to miss Will holding up an Optimus Prime toy in honor of Prime Day, but I enjoyed Zeon on the show nonetheless." There's a missed. there's a new Optimus Prime toy that uh, Hasbro put out. It's already like sold out everywhere, even though it's up for pre order. It is based on his look from the original, like the '85 movie, the animated movie. So therefore, it is the most perfect looking Optimus Prime like they've ever made. Beautiful man, Optimus. Yeah, ninety dollars. Okay, I mean, if it's that pretty, yeah, I mean, like this is it. That's just inflation, man. Yeah. All right, that just that looks like the cartoon. That yeah. just straight up looks like the cartoon. Yeah, but like it's like it transforms and everything, and it comes with his trailer and stuff. It's awesome. It, it's not ninety dollars. Awesome. Maybe that's because I have no money. It was like cast iron. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they used to be cast iron when they were made in Japan, but. Uh, Nick Marcy says, I still carry my 3DS everywhere. Oh, my God. Oh, look at you. Yeah, you're, you're one for the cause. Uh, Nathan Russell says, I think the Zelda line from the ESRB isn't saying Link is playable. Did you hear about this? Yeah, I put. Uh, yeah, I heard about it. I put the news article <laughs> on the keep. It's saying as Link, players usually use swords and arrows, but as Zelda, you you will be using magic instead. Yeah, that's what i eventually the conclusion i eventually came to yeah all right now we're in the chat okay hello everybody a guy named beat em ups in the chat says i want to watch more things or play more games but two hours of val time calls every single night but i do waste a lot of time playing 
Valorant over and over again. So I'm not the one. To, I'm not the type of person to advocate playing a game and watching something at the same time. Um, but I feel like a game like a multiplayer game like Valorant, which is much more like I don't want to say it's a passive experience, but I feel like it's something like you can get into a zone and like go through the motion, so to speak, while having something on in the background. It's like white noise. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> For Call of Duty, yeah. If you're just grinding Call of Duty, yeah, sure. If you're playing competitive Call of Duty, no, because you got to talk yeah. and stuff. Valorant, you need constant communication. Yeah. Uh, and it needs your entire focus. There's right. no way you're doing anything. In fact, we were playing with random people the other day, and uh, one of the per one of the people said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. My music's too loud." And we all were like, "Dude, what the fuck? You're <laughs> listening to music?" Yeah. So, yeah, can't do a game yeah. like uh, Nintendo uh, World Championship. That you could play with something else going on because you're yeah. sitting there playing two seconds right. of Mario level over and over and over and over again. So, I mean, I used to be like my friends in high school when they would play video games, they would play like, you know, their new metal and their pop punk and whatnot while they played. And I would just be like, no, turn that shit off. I want to play the game. Yeah. I want to experience the game. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Dooling, thank you for the five dollars super chat on YouTube. Bob, ever consider double streaming your Twitch to YouTube? I hate the ads on Twitch so much and have never turned in, tuned in as a result. Thanks, I love you. Yeah, I've considered just not doing Twitch at all, uh, but uh, I've been going back and forth a lot. Like mm. I, I even talked to our YouTube rep. I have like a monthly meeting with a YouTube guy. Yeah. Uh, and I was earlier this year, I seriously considered not streaming on Twitch anymore and just doing it on YouTube. Uh, and he talked me out of it. Wow. He's the YouTube guy. Yeah. And he talked me out of streaming on yeah. YouTube. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I mean, I kind of just think Twitch is like a silly, goofy time. Yeah. I kind of just do it because it's a nice way to talk to, to you people. Mm -hmm. Uh, so... Like, I would like growth, but it's not really the most important yeah. thing to me. So, uh, I don't know. The answer is, I, I have considered it, but I don't. I, I don't have a good answer. Uh, so, Bob, can you explain the Loretta post that's gone viral? It, uh, don't clean your Switch with... Is, oh, I saw this, actually. I what kinda, is it? I, I kind of... I didn't know it went viral. I kind of, like, just glanced over it. Uh, this, oh that yeah it's the Zelda edition switch uh, he used rubbing alcohol yeah. and rubbed the back <laughs> off obviously don't do that it's plastic yeah don't put rubbing alcohol on the back of your is it plastic no it's like metal is it no it's plastic the kickstand's metal is it the hinges are metal well I Anyway, the, it's paint. The, the fucking yeah. shit's paint. You can't yeah, put rubbing, rubbing alcohol is going to get it. rid of paint. You don't... Yeah. Just a little bit of, of water. Like yeah. a very little bit. Yeah. Distilled water, they say, works uh, best because it has no, none of the harmful minerals in it. Right. But right, right. yeah, just don't, don't do that. C-Mac, thanks for the Prime over on YouTube. And Mr. Rock PR, thanks for the 16 months. 16 months of bliss. Keep being the cool... Oh, I read that already. Mr. Rock PR is bouncing between YouTube and Twitch. <laughs> Um. Uh, Dark Spider Dave. Hey, well, my toy videos are thirty minutes. Don't come at me. Yeah, and I have one of your ten minute videos in my watch later queue that I haven't gotten to yet because I'm it, I desperately need better figure stands. Who, who said this? Dark Spider Dave. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Um. Mega Dragon, hey Bob and Will, congrats on getting a panel for Long Island Retro. By the way, we yes <laughs> are going. We actually have a panel yes, for Long Island we, Retro. We will it be there. The, they invite. They invited us this time. It is the Friday of the show. Yes. Also, did you see the email we got today? I got it at least no. about uh, Comic Con. We got denied New York Comic Con really uh, uh, content creator access. At least I did. Okay. So you can check yours. I can check yours. I mean, but I'm sure that it counts for both of us. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just not gonna fucking go if they're if they're not gonna give me a content. Yeah, page. I guess I'm not going either. <laughs> Cause I've been going less and less every year. I go for like an hour. 
now because it's the same shit every time i just i didn't want to go status okay thank you for applying unfortunately your application was not approved for this year but we recommend you try next year all right i mean like maybe next year uh we'll be bigger creators yeah i mean like honestly like the whole buying a ticket aspect of for new york comic it's a pain in the ass it, it's a pain in the ass and it's it's very expensive it's once you like tack on all the taxes and fees and shit, it's like a hundred dollars per day. And it's just like, you know, it's not worth it at that point. You're spending a hundred dollars to get in plus like, you know, whatever you want to buy on the show floor. And it's like less and less I'm finding things that like, I'm actually like interested in getting, you know, I'm hitting a cap. I'm like what I actually want at these shows. And also too, like it's a comic book convention, there are lots of those around. I can just go to a different one that's like cheaper and easier to get into. It has all the same stuff. I'll be surprised if there's anything at Comic Con that I care about. Yeah. Because every year it's the same shit over and yeah. over. Again. There's been less of like the cool like toys that I like. Yeah. They have them at like San Diego Comic Con, but you can buy those online. Yeah. They started putting them on like their their storefronts. Except McFarland, he has a really cool uh, black and white uh, DC Trinity figure set that I want, but it's only available on the show floor. <laughs> Last year, he had the Nightfall Batman figure um, in the proper color scheme and the proper blues and like the black shadow on his face. Only available at San Diego Comic Con. You have to be on the show floor to get it. I'm Tom McFarland. I created Spawn. That's what he sounds like. It's a good impression uh sorry gavin uh we uh we won't be uh seeing you this <laughs> yeah, year probably sorry uh but i mean if you're gonna be in new york just like let us know we'll hang out and shit i don't know do go. some do something also bob i picked up the nitro deck plus for my switch you gotta get it, it makes the switch feel great i have the regular one it's what's the, the same feel it's the same thing what's the difference between that and the plus it's just the, the plus also acts as a dock okay that's it all right um apparently nintendo recommends something like equal 50 percent isopropyl alcohol liquid antiseptic instead of 99 percent isopropyl no just don't 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 do that no, that's for the yeah. screen don't put that on the back where the paint is yeah i mean like rubbing alcohol like it's good for like cleaning cartridges and like contacts and stuff not so much for like the system itself. You want to talk about what happened with Splatoon and Team Jackpot getting canceled? I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, and I couldn't figure out what happened. Uh, nobody was talking. Oh, the only thing people were saying in the replies was that they were being racist, and I yeah. don't know anything outside of that. Other people seemed to be very happy that Nintendo uh, basically canceled this team. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I was trying to look through it, and I couldn't figure it out. Uh, so I have no opinion on it because yeah. I don't know what they did. Oh, what? Uh, quick question: Andor versus Dark Universe? Oh, that's for you. Uh, Dark Andor versus Dark Universe. I don't know, man. Andor was uh. It was a slow burn. It was very different, but it was ultimately like a satisfying, you know, really interesting take on the Star Wars universe. Whereas the Dark Universe had the mummy with Tom Cruise. <laughs> Both are equally valuable in terms of art, let me tell you. Bob, do you think the Z Flip would be a good uh, video for emulation? Yeah. I like the idea of the foldable devices and the flip and whatever, mm -hmm. but uh, they're just expensive. $1,000 for a Z Flip? Yeah. Like, that's, not, that's way too much for me just to make a video on it. Unless they want to give me one, but they're not going to do that yeah. for emulation. Uh, so, yeah, I would love to, but that's... Oh, wait, here's one for $300? Refurbished? There you go. How old is this? Uh, Z Flip 4. Not bad at all. It won't let me click on it. <laughs> um... What are you guys doing to your Nintendo Switch to feel like it needs alcohol to clean it? Yeah. Again, just like rub it with a little water if you got something on it, but that's really it. Yeah. Flip 3 was 2022. Really? This was Flip 4. Wow. Do oh. you think like they degrade in value so much? Because like, you know, people don't really want them as much as... I have no idea. 
that's like a lot. Yeah. That's like a big difference. The next I bought uh the 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 nothing phone, not the nothing phone, the other offshoot thing, the C something, whatever. Oh yeah. I bought that because it was two hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and I think that I can make a cool video out of that. Oh, is that the modular one? Yes, yeah. the CMF phone. Yes, Wizard yeah. of the Coin just said, would love yeah. to see someone do a design with the CMF, CMF phone and a slide-out controller. I am working on that. Unfortunately, though, I don't know if I'm going to do a slide-out controller. I kind of... I know everybody wants me to do a slide-out controller, but I think I kind of just want to turn it into a horizontal handheld because that yeah. would be easy. Um... All right. Did I thank C Mac for the prime? Thank you for the prime. Slide out controller question mark? Like uh Like the um the old uh like the, Android phones with the keyboard that just slid out from the bottom. Like the Vita Go? PSP, PSP Go, Go like yeah. The PSP Go or the yeah. or the PlayStation phone. Mm hmm Xperia Play, I think it was called. That shit. The question is, can rubbing alcohol clean maple syrup and mashed potatoes out of a console? God, <laughs> man, just fucking don't eat near it. And, I what, got... and why are you eating mashed potatoes and maple syrup? I mean, maybe he was having breakfast and like instead Two of hash... meals back to back <laughs> next to your fucking Nintendo Switch. No, he said I got that on my GameCube uh, years what? ago. Why are you eating that close to the GameCube? <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> That's my question. What the fuck? <laughs> are you holding the GameCube while you're eating? Was the GameCube your plate? That's, yeah. That's... Why? I could see getting it on the controller. Yeah. You know? <sighs> Uh, also, when he was six, he uh, dumped in my original Game Boy in a bucket of water to see what would happen. Oh, just to see. I mean, I've done similar. I dropped stupid my Game things. Boy Color in a cup of water by accident, and it still worked. A Shockingly, cup, yeah. a cup of water. Yeah. I famously uh, ripped open our Game Boy Advance to put a pocket knife inside of it. It wasn't <laughs> a pocket knife. It was a USB thumb drive. Oh no! The idea was I wanted it to be uh, a Swiss Army, a Swiss knife? Army yeah. knife that also had a USB drive in it. <laughs> It failed miserably. Yes. <laughs> what happened was our parents used to lock me in my room to study and I would do anything in my power yes. to not do that. So I had a Game Boy Advance. I had mm -hmm. scissors. I had a <laughs> screwdriver. I had hot glue. Yeah. And a USB drive. And I was like, let's see what I can do here. <laughs> uh... All right. That's it. Thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den or youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than the watches, you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast podcast service be it apple podcast spotify youtube podcast or even audible.com but no matter where you get the show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms okay you'll never guess who's streaming right now it's jackson oh boy been live for like three months uh thanks for hanging out everybody i'll probably stream on thursday uh it'll probably be nintendo switch world championship whatever the name of the game is uh thursday hopefully i'll have my asus ally video up uh i'm uh kind of uh in a conflict with some sponsors but hopefully uh it'll all work out and i'll be able to post it yeah i also have to immediately film that right now <laughs> so goodbye everybody bye